Hey there, people. So today I have got another big one for you. This is my all pets guide covering all the pets and all the light pets on all the platforms. Uh, I'm going to show you and tell you about every single one available on PC, but I'm also going to just tell you about the ones that are available on other platforms because, of course, I can't show you the ones that are exclusive to uh, the old gen console and mobile. There are actually some of those. Uh, so. I'm also going to tell you about how to get them and summon them and dismiss them quickly. So on old gen and mobile platforms, you'll have to actually manually summon uh, the pets by placing them up in your hotbar here uh, and just using it as you would any other uh, item. On PC and on new gen consoles, since they finally got that big update on uh, PS4 and Xbox One, uh, you actually have dedicated slots for pets, which are in your second equipment tab here. See, there's one for pet and there's a separate one for light pet, so you can actually have one of each at the same time. Uh, so, despite the separate, ca separate categories, two of the regular pets do also provide some light. I'll get to that. Uh, there are 26 regular pets on PC, 22 on the new gen consoles, again, PS4 and Xbox One, 27 on the old gen consoles, uh, that would be Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii U. There are 35 regular pets on mobile and 31 on 3DS. There's also the seven light pets available. There are three that are available on all those platforms. There are three that are only on the uh, platforms that have the updates, PC and the new gen consoles and uh, there's one that so far is still PC exclusive. And of course, again, with uh, the update coming to mobile, actually it's, mobile is going to lose some of the exclusive pets probably that it currently has, and then it will gain the ones that the other updated platforms have. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, in terms of order, just in what I'm gonna cover where, uh, first I'm going to cover the pets that are available on all the platforms, then I'll cover the ones that are on the updated uh, platforms, that's PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Then I'll cover the ones that are still PC exclusive, there are a few. Uh, then we'll get on to the old gen and mobile platforms, and finally the ones that are exclusive to mobile. So, first, the ones that are available on all platforms. Uh, and I've got them all in my inventory, I've got all the items here. So, the first, uh, and I'm going to do these roughly in the order that you can get them as well, if for each section. Uh, so. Again, that's rough because, of course, it's not like you can only get them in one order. But anyway, um, the first one maybe that you might be able to easily get is uh, the fish item here. It's a fish, and as you can see, it summons a baby penguin. I'm also going to use my zoom feature for once. Uh, so I've summoned that. It's standing behind me. There it is, baby penguin. <laughs> so again, if you're on PC, you can actually just right click and probably on a new gen console, you can just like alternate button um, and that will automatically put it in the appropriate slot. And that is my little uh, baby penguin and he'll follow me around and that's what a pet does. Uh, most of them, there are some on mobile that do some damage for you, uh, but most of them are just there for decoration. They're just a little companion that'll follow you around. Um, and I will get to the details on those as well. Uh, so another one that you can get early on, um, actually, sorry, the uh, the fish item that you use to summon the baby penguin is found randomly in ice chests in the underground snow biome. Uh, so then the second one, and I'm going to try to get through these fairly quickly, uh, is the pet turtle uh, for which you will need the seaweed. And there are two types of seaweed. There's the seaweed you get from fishing, that's not the one you want. This is the seaweed that you have a roughly a 1 in 50 chance of finding in ivy chests in the jungle shrines in the underground jungle. And if you use that, uh, you will get this baby turtle. And the baby turtle will follow you around. <laughs> and that's your pet turtle. Uh, so again, underground jungle, jungle shrines. Now, another one that is pretty, uh, ends up being pretty common, even though it's actually fairly rare to get, it's semi-rare. Um, this is the Zephyr fish. The item and the pet are the same name. Uh, it flies and it follows you. And interestingly, if you teleport, it will just fly to you. It won't teleport with you. A lot of them will teleport with you. Uh, so the Zephyr fish item and the pet are the same name. Uh, it is a somewhat rare catch when you're fishing in any biome, but because you can get it when fishing in any biome, it ends up being uh, fairly common. I've just about always gotten one of these. Um, the chance of getting it is related to your fishing power, so it's not like a, a certain chance all the time. Uh, and then another one that you can ultimately get effectively by fishing is the Mini Minotaur. So a Mini Minotaur, the item is called Tartar Sauce. Uh, and it summons the mini minotaur and he'll follow you around. 
and uh, you get that in iron crates, which are obtained by fishing in any biome. So uh, it's it's basically random uh, when you'll get that. It's reasonably common. Um, I usually get one of those as well. Maybe not quite as common, arguably, but you get it in iron crates from fishing. So you can get all of those pretty early. Now, uh, things that require a little more uh, unique time and effort. Um, the black cat. The black cat is summoned by the unlucky yarn. Uh, and you can see it's cute. It's a little black cat. It's got a little like witch hat on. Uh, you get that appropriately from um, goodie bags during the Halloween event. It's a 1 in 150 chance uh, from each goodie bag that you will get that during the Halloween event. So, of course, that's only in the fall and October, basically. Um, that's the unlucky yarn. And similar idea, the uh, squashling is summoned by the magic pumpkin seed. Magic pumpkin seed, or magical pumpkin seed, um, is during the Halloween event when you're harvesting fully grown pumpkins. It has to be fully grown. Uh, it's a 1 in 200 chance when you are harvesting fully grown pumpkins only during Halloween that you can get the magical pumpkin seed, and that gets you this squashling. And it's basically like a jack-o'-lantern that walks on its little stems. Um, and then, uh, again, similar theme but a different timing, uh, the dog whistle, which you get during Christmas, will summon a puppy, because it's Christmas, so you get a puppy. <laughs> so uh, you can get the puppy pet during Christmas. It's a 1 in 413 chance, so it's quite rare uh, from presents during the Christmas event. And, of course, presents like goodie bags are dropped by enemies during that time. Um, now, the puppy... According to the wiki, the puppy may not be available on 3DS, but it's available on all the other platforms. Uh, so another one that's sort of rare, and of course you can get these early if you happen to be playing during those events uh, that time of year, um, which is why I put them there. But uh, something you can get um, as you're progressing a little bit through the game is the baby dinosaur, and that comes from the amber mosquito that I've already got my mouse on. Summons a baby, baby dinosaur. You get the amber mosquito... Um, by using the extractinator. It's a 1 in 5,000 chance if you're putting silt or slush into the extractinator, but if you get desert fossils, uh, the chance increases to 1 in 1,666. Either way, it's pretty rare, uh, but you do get this cool baby dinosaur if you put enough stuff in the extractinator. <laughs> and those are just odds, of course. It's not guaranteed. Um, so, moving right along, we have a lot of babies coming here. There's a baby eater, which comes from the eater's bone. The eater's bone is something that you get uh, by defeating the uh, eater of worlds. Uh, it's a 1 in 20 chance. You won't get it every time, but a 1 in 20 chance on average uh, that you will get this baby eater. It's like the other ones, but it's cuter and it follows you and it doesn't hurt you. <laughs> so you can get that. Uh, similar idea, there is a baby hornet. Um, and the baby hornet... Uh, is the item is called nectar. It looks like a flower, but uh, you get that from the queen bee. It's a 1 in 20 chance when you defeat the queen bee, similarly, uh, except if you're in expert mode, this one uh, increases to a 1 in 9 if you're playing in expert mode to get this one. So, uh, moving right along, there is also a baby skeletron head, which is a popular choice. Uh, that's the bone key, and this is why people want to defeat the dungeon guardian, because that is how you get this one. There is a baby skeletron head pet. Uh, you need to get the bone key. The only way to get the bone key is to defeat the dungeon guardian, not to be confused with skeletron. Uh, this is the guardian that uh, comes when you try to go down in the dungeon without defeating skeletron, and it's very difficult to kill the dungeon guardian, but if you do, you are guaranteed, actually, 100%, you will get the bone key if you kill the dungeon guardian. And you get this cool little uh, mini Skeletron head that flies around and follows you. Uh, so, yeah, baby Skeletron head. So again, all these babies. Uh, one that is not a baby, the Tiki Spirit. So uh, you can actually buy this from the Witch Doctor. You have to defeat uh, Queen Bee to get the Witch Doctor. But if you do, and if you put the Witch Doctor in the jungle biome, the Witch Doctor has to be in the jungle biome. Uh, of course, make a house for him in the jungle biome. And then you can buy this Tiki Totem, which summons the Tiki Spirit flying above my head here. Um, and it'll try to stay mostly above you. Uh, it has to be in hard mode, though, as well. So you put the Witch Doctor in the jungle biome, you get to hard mode. Then you can buy the Tiki Totem from the Witch Doctor for two platinum. It is not cheap, but it gets you the cool uh, Tiki Spirit. Back to the babies. Um, and this is in hard mode as well. The strange glowing mushroom you can buy from your truffle 
NPC. Of course, the truffle NPC only becomes available in hard mode, uh, and you have to make a house in a above ground um, mushroom biome. You can see I have one up above me in the sky. That's where I put mine, and there's where my truffle lives in his house. Um, and you can buy then from him the strange glowing mushroom which summons the baby truffle. Now this is one of the two actually that is considered a regular pet but it does actually glow a little bit so it will help provide light uh, if you're in a dark place. <laughs> so it's one of the two that will do that uh, that is a regular pet rather than a light pet. Now uh, another baby there is a baby snowman summoned by the toy sled. So the toy sled um, you get this cute little baby snowman that bounces along kicks up dust behind him and you get that by um, it's a 1 in 20 chance from ice mimics in the snow biome so again you have to be in hard mode to find ice mimics but if you happen to get an ice mimic in the snow biome and you beat it you've got a 1 in 20 chance of getting the toy sled which will summon the baby snow snowman and it's cute <laughs> so uh, of course you can farm these things if you want to spend the time it's gonna take a while um, another one that ends up being very expensive, after you defeat a pirate invasion, which will come when you're in hard mode, if you defeat a pirate invasion and you have a house free, uh, your pirate NPC will move in. But you will need to put your pirate NPC in a house in the ocean biome at the ends of the earth uh, to be able to buy the parrot cracker. And the parrot cracker will summon a pet parrot. Pirate theme, get it? So. Um, it will fly after you. It seems to have a bit of a wider range before it decides to fly after you. But yeah, that's your little pet parrot, and that's how you get it. It is three platinum and 75 gold to buy the parrot cracker from the parrot NPC. So again, not cheap. Um, and another thing that happens once you're in hard mode and you defeat one of the mechanical bosses, you will get the solar eclipse. And during those solar eclipses, um, you can get the eye spring which will have this little bouncing eye thing. It's like an eye on a bloody coil. <laughs> and that is summoned by the eye spring item, uh, the eyeball spring pet. And uh, you get that actually by defeating the Izor during the solar eclipse. It's a 1 in 15 chance normally, or 1 in 10 if you're playing an expert. And uh, yeah, that's how you get that. <laughs> so. Uh, as you move along through hard mode, the next uh, one that I'm going to mention is when you defeat Plantera, you have a 1 in 20 chance. Again, that seems to be common with the ones that drop from bosses. Uh, you have a 1 in 20 chance of getting the seedling item. And the seedling item summons this little, uh, it's called a pet sapling, actually. You can see in the tooltip, summons a pet sapling, the seedling item. And you get that by defeating Plantera. It's a 1 in 20 chance, so you may have to defeat Plantera a lot if you really want that one. Um, Next one I'm going to mention is the Cursed Sapling. The Cursed Sapling, the item and the pet have the same name. Um, you get that during the uh, Pumpkin Moon event, and it's dropped by Morning Wood. So if you're fighting through the Pumpkin Moon event and you defeat Morning Wood, uh, the chance of getting it is variable, as a lot of things during the Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon. Uh, but you get uh, Cursed Sapling sometimes by defeating Morning Wood. Uh, I didn't have any trouble getting this uh, by, you know, I did go through the Pumpkin Moon a number of times, mind you, but I think I got a bunch of these, if I recall co correctly. This is the other one, though, that provides light, and when you get far enough away, see, it flies, and it's got this, like, flaming jet trail, and it'll basically circle around you. So, of all the regular pets, this is the other one, along with the baby truffle, that will actually provide some light. Uh, so, keep that in mind as well. Um, similar theme, though. There is also a pet spider, which is summoned by the spider egg. The spider egg is dropped by um, the pumpkin during that same pumpkin moon event. It's a little more rare, I think, or a little harder because the pumpkin becomes comes along a little later during the pumpkin moon. Um, but yeah, spider egg will summon little baby spider. Uh, unlike the cursed sapling, does not provide light. I guess if you like spiders, you might be into that. Um, hopefully you don't hate spiders, you'll, you'll be like terrified right now. But anyway, um, and similar theme again, um, there is a Frost Moon version as well. The Baby Grinch's Mischief Whistle, longest item name in the game apparently, summons a Baby Grinch. So it's literally, you know, like the Grinch who stole Christmas, but it's like a Baby Grinch. And uh, I guess that's sort of cute and angry at the same time. But uh, the 
Uh, Baby Grinch's Mischief Whistle is dropped by the Ice Queen during the Frost Moon. That would be a pretty hard one to get because you have to get pretty far through the Frost Moon to be fighting the Ice Queen. And then, of course, the chance is fairly low, so you're going to have to kill probably a lot of Ice Queens to get that. But uh, if you want, you know, uh, bragging rights, I guess, or, or you just really want this particular pet, that's how you get it. Frost Moon, Ice Queen. Uh, and the last one that is available on all platforms of the regular pet is the uh, pet lizard, actually. So pet lizard um, is summoned by the lizard egg. The lizard egg is a rare 1 in 1,000 chance drop from flying snakes and lizards in the jungle temple. So that's, uh, of course, the big orange jungle temple in the underground jungle. Um, it's a very low chance. It's actually one of the rarest items, uh, one of the lowest chances to get an item in the game, one in 1,000. Obviously, uh, I did mention at least one that's rarer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's your pet lizard. It's dropped by flying snakes and lizards. You're going to have to kill a heck of a lot of them probably to get it unless you're extremely lucky. <laughs> And there you go, there's your pet lizard. Um, so there are some light pets that are also available on all platforms. Um, and interestingly, actually, uh, at least on the updated platforms, you'll notice if you take away the summoning item, the pet is still there. <laughs> it's no longer equipped, but the pet will actually continue to be there. And uh, that's how you, um, if you're on one of the uh, platforms where you don't have the dedicated slots, one of the pre-update platforms, you'll just need to use the item again to unsummon your pet. Uh, but if you're on the updated platforms, you'll need to basically, uh, you'll have your little buff icons and you can just uh, right click or, or a secondary uh, button on that to get rid of your pet, by the way. So light pets. Um, the oldest one, I think, uh, one of the oldest ones anyway, uh, and um, one that is available on all platforms is the shadow orb. So you actually have a chance to get these uh, when you're breaking shadow orbs, it's a one in five chance. Um, the item and the uh, light pet have the same name. So if I, you'll notice that goes in the second slot. There's the pet and the light pet. That goes in the light pet slot. And it does provide some light and it will follow you. It's um, This was one of the oldest ones. So uh, it actually went through some iterations. It was called something else originally. Um, but there you go. That's your shadow orb. It's one in five chance from breaking shadow orbs. So there's shadow orb objects, and then there's the shadow orb item that you get from them, and then there's the shadow orb light pet, which uh, is what comes when you equip that. Uh, so one in five, and uh, that's your first, maybe what, probably your earliest um, light pet, certainly the earliest that you can get. Of course, you can only get that if you're in a world that has corruption instead of crimson, but don't worry, we'll get to another thing. Um, and the second one that I'm going to talk about is the fairy bell. You, there's a fairy light pet. Uh, now this is actually the only pet item that is crafted on PC and console platforms. So I went ahead and I left the items in here. You will buy a bell from the wizard, which of course you can only get once you're in hard mode. Um, and then you're going to need 25 pixie dust from the pixies. Um, 10 souls of sight and 8 souls of light. That recipe is different if you're on one of the platforms that does not have that big update. So on those platforms, uh, the the items are the same, it's just different amounts. So instead of 25, you'll need 80 pixie dust. Instead of um, 10 souls of sight, you'll need 20. And instead of 8 souls of light, you'll need 12. And either way, you're going to want to go to your hard mode uh, anvil, or a calcum or mithril anvil, and then you'll get the option, fairy bell. There you go, a bell, and some pixie dust, souls of light, souls of sight. Bam, got your fairy bell, and flip that in there, and we have a fairy. It looks a lot like a pixie. You can actually use dyes to make it look the same color. If you use an orange dye, it'll look the same color as a pixie. I think it's actually three random colors. Uh, so in fact, I don't know. Yeah, I would have to like unsummon it and summon it again. Um, I think, yeah, because I have the item equipped, I can just do that. But there you go. Uh, there are different colors depending when you summon it. And if you unsummon it, you'll just get a different color as long as you have the item equipped. Uh, oh, no, it's decided to do differently this time. But there we go. Da -da -da -da. Oh, interesting. I don't know. That's weird. But uh, probably if I just swap it for the other one and then... Oh, no, I've broken my light pet. But anyway, um, 
So one more is available on all platforms, and that is the Wisp, and that comes from the Wisp in a Bottle. The Wisp in a Bottle is a 1 in 400 chance from any of the three Armored Bones variants in the dungeon. So of course, uh, you will need to get into hard mode, I think, to get the Armored Bones, uh, and of course you will have to have defeated Skeletron to get in the dungeon, or break your way in, I guess, at some point you can do that, but you'll want to kill the Dungeon Guardian too in that case. Anyway, without going on, um, 1 in 400 from any of the three Armored Bone variants, or if you're on Expert, uh, it becomes 1 in 267. You get your Wisp in a bottle, equip that, and you will get your Wisp, but I really seriously seem to have broken my, uh, <laughs> my Light Pets by um, clicking that one off. So you know what? I'm going to be right back. All right. Figured it out. Um, so you can just use the item and use it as an item, and uh, and that'll bring it back. There you go. There's your wisp. And by the way, these are in order of brightness um, as well. So those that are available on all platforms, the shadow orb is the least bright, uh, fairy bells in the middle, and the wisp is the brightest of those three. You can actually see the effect on the stairs here. Uh, it does provide. It's actually one of the two brightest. Um, light pets on any platform. So moving along to ones that uh, are only on the 1.3 update onward or the 1.3 equivalent. So those updated platforms, um, regular pets actually I'm going to do first. There's only one regular pet that was added in that big update and that is the uh, baby face monster actually. And the baby face monster is summoned by the bone rattle item. Um, so as you can see again I was say saying you can have a light pet and a regular pet at the same time. So you get a baby face monster with the bone rattle and you get that bone rattle um, by defeating the brain of Cthulhu boss. So that was basically an attempt to make things equivalent whether you're in a corruption or crimson world. Uh, if you defeat the brain of Cthulhu you have a 1 in 20 chance of getting the bone rattle uh, similar to um, getting that one, uh, the eater's bone from the eater of worlds. Uh, if you're in a crimson world you can get this one instead, the bone rattle, which will summon the um, baby, uh, what's his face? <laughs> the uh, baby um, face monster. <laughs> okay, so back on to light pets though. There were a bunch of light pets added in the 1.3 or equivalent update. Um, again, in an attempt to make things more equivalent, there is a crimson heart that was added. So the Crimson Heart, oh that's interesting, there we go, <laughs> the Crimson Heart again uh, equivalent idea to um, the Shadow Orb, if you're in a Crimson World you get the Crimson Heart for smashing Crimson Hearts, again it's a 1 in 5 chance when uh, breaking a Crimson Heart, uh, Crimson Heart and the, uh, well the Crimson Heart object and item and uh, light pet are again all called the same thing much as like the shadow orb version uh, although there is one difference and the difference is that um, the crimson heart can actually also be found in crimson crates when you're fishing in the crimson so if you have um, a fishing hole in the crimson you can get crimson crates and in those you have a chance of finding this as well um, other things that were added in the 1.3 equivalent update uh, the Magic Lantern. Now this one is cool because uh, you get this actually from the Skeleton Merchant for 10 gold during a full moon, only during a full moon, uh, and when you find the Skeleton Merchant, which makes it really hard <laughs> um, because the Skeleton Merchant doesn't show up that often, so unless you're going to like find him and then wait for a full moon to happen, uh, it's going to be a little hard to get, but yeah, so now it doesn't want to auto summon any of these, uh, but that's what it looks like. It's a little uh, magic lamp that follows you. Um, the item is named the same thing. It is bought from the Skeleton Merchant for 10 gold during a full moon. But what it does, you'll notice this chest is suddenly sparkling. So besides giving you light, it also exposes nearby treasure up to 15 tiles from its location. So if I go to where my chests are, chests are considered treasure, you can see them all glowing because they're close enough by um, that and I may as well zoom out for this one. You can see there's an area of effect. This one over here is not glowing. I have to get a little closer. A little closer. A little closer. A little closer. Come on. Come on. If I get close enough, see, it starts glowing. And the ones way over here stop glowing. So basically it will expose uh, treasure and ores, I believe, as well, um, within a certain distance from you. So that can be very useful, obviously, if you're wandering around underground looking for uh, underground houses and ores and so on. Uh, if you can manage to get this, it will expose treasure that's nearby. 
and uh, sort of like a Spelunker potion, but instead of the whole screen, it's just within a certain radius from your character. So that's pretty awesome. And uh, another one that was also added uh, with that update, um, which actually does a bit of the same thing, is the suspicious looking tentacle, which, which summons a suspicious looking eye, um, which is like the ones that you will see uh, coming around Moon Lord after you defeat Moon Lords like hands and eye, um, you'll get these, you'll get suspicious looking eyes that are much bigger than this one. Um, but this one is expert only. You can only obtain this in expert. Uh, it is always though, if you are playing an expert, you will always get it in Moon Lord's treasure bag. So that's why this one is last of the ones that were added because you will get it when you defeat Moon Lord in expert mode. It is like literally like the last thing you can do in terms of regular game goals, so to speak. Um, the last boss of the game in expert mode, you will get this and it flies around and I guess it's a cool bonus for doing all that um, because you'll notice the eye actually like shifts. It actually changes where it's looking. Um, it will actually look at where treasure is and you can see that these things are glowing in the direction that it's looking. Um, it is a radius effect as well. Uh, it will also look at enemies and NPCs, but um, you'll notice that it will only glow if it's looking at treasure, um, which is actually, I really need to zoom in to show this effect if it's even going to show. It's a little funny um, because it will choose to look at enemies and NPCs and it depends what it's looking at, uh, but if it is looking at treasure, it, um, yeah, there you go. You can see that little sparkle effect. So if it decides to look at treasure, if there's nothing else nearby that it's looking at instead, um, it will have a little sparkly effect on the actual eye as well as it will look in the direction of whatever it is looking at. So uh, it gives you some little indicators. And it, it supposedly will also grow and shrink depending what it's looking at as well, whether it's treasure, NPCs, or enemies. Um, I think it grows for treasure and shrinks for enemies. I'm not sure about NPCs. So those are all the uh, ones that were added in the 1.3 update. Now, there are currently still a few that are exclusive to the PC platform that were added after the initial 1.3 update. Um, so there are a few that are regular pets. Let's get to those first. Uh, interestingly, actually, this one's PC only not because of the uh, update when it was added. This one has been around a long time, um, but it is exclusive to PC nonetheless. It always has been from like when the game was first released. Uh, the carrot summons a pet bunny. Um, the pet bunny and the carrot that summons it are only available uh, if you have normally only available if you have the collector's edition of the game. That's the actual boxed physical copy of the game. Um, and you will get this carrot when you start any new character on the collector's edition uh, and it will summon this pet bunny. So you'll have that from the beginning of the game if you have the box collector's edition. Now it is possible to get it if you don't have the collector's edition, but it is not easy. Um, <laughs> you will not be able to get it in the game. You'll basically have to cheat. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't have the collector's edition. I did have to hack this in the game. In fact, I'm gonna come clean here. I only had 12 of the regular pets and two of the seven light pets. Um, so out of 26 regular pets and uh, seven light pets, I had 12 of the regular ones and two of the light pets. The rest of them, I hacked them in with a map editor, I'm not gonna lie. But this one requires an extra step uh, beyond that because even if you have this carrot item from an inventory editor or a, a map editor, um, it will not work unless you actually, obviously if you have the collector's edition, you'll get it regardless. But um, if you don't, the only way to get it is to not only get the item, but the item won't work unless you also put in a registry edit. And I am not gonna tell you how to do that because you probably shouldn't be playing with your registry if you don't know how. If you know how to do that, you can go and look it up. I'm not gonna tell you um, just because it's dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. It's really dangerous to mess with your registry. Um, and you'll notice that my bunny is black. The bunny is actually the color of the shirt that your character was wearing when you created your character. So when you create your character, you choose your shirt color. Um, that chooses also the color of the bunny, interestingly enough. You can dye the bunny with some dyes and you can dye most of your pets, um, but the bunny doesn't work with a lot of the dyes. So um, yeah, I actually have my dyes here. Uh, so I can sort of um, show you this. Like if I put a silver die in here, it doesn't change the color of the bunny really. Um, but there are certain ones that do work. Uh, let's see. 
Some of the fancier ones, actually. Oh, yeah, that one changes it slightly. But there was one. I was playing with this. Oh, yeah, the Stardust die. Uh, that does kind of work. But there's some weird ones. Like, uh, if you... I think it was one of the Acid dies. Where's my Acid die at? Actually, the Pixie die has a weird effect. See? <laughs> So you can you can die your your pets in general using the die slots, um, but some of them don't work on the bunny, and some of them do, um, and that may be the case with a few others as well. Uh, just keep that in mind. Anyway, bunny exclusive. There you go. Um, that's how you get it. So um, another one that is still uh, PC only is actually the companion cube, and of course this is a reference to the portal games. Um, so yeah, Companion Cube uh, bounces around. Uh, it is one of the only ones that will make a noise. It will make occasional actually farting noises. Um, and it's pretty rare. Uh, it's a one in 150 chance to be sold by the traveling merchant. I did actually get this legitimately, um, unlike that last one. So the, the Companion Cube, I did actually buy it from the traveling merchant. It's really expensive. It's rare that he sells it, one in 150, uh, but it also costs five platinum to buy it. It's the most expensive item to buy in the game, the companion cube. And also, if you're in the dark, uh, apparently occasionally it will stab you. Um, that's a little in-joke on the portal game as well. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's your companion cube. It was added in 1.3.1, so uh, after the initial 1.3 update, which is why it's still only PC only. Um, and a couple of others uh, regular pets that you can only get on PC. These were added with the Old Ones Army event. Uh, the Gato Egg will get you this little propeller Gato. So the item is the Gato Egg. The pet is called the Propeller Gato. And uh, obviously it's like a cat that's sad because it's being carried around on a little propeller. You know how cats are. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you'll get this Propeller Gato. Uh, it is dropped by the Dark Mage during the Old One's Army event, as is the Dragon Egg, which summons this little Horde Dragon, uh, actually Horde Gran, um, summoned by the Dragon Egg. It's the Horde Gran, apparently. And it's also dropped by the Dark Mage during the Old One's Army event, which is still a PC exclusive event. Now, there's one uh, PC exclusive light pet, uh, which is also from the Old One's Army event, but it, you don't get it the same way. It's the uh, Flicker Wick, and you guys may have seen me um, using this one. That's what it looks like. It's uh, Again, this is the Dungeon uh, Defenders 2 crossover event, the Old Ones Army. And uh, so these are like themed with from Dungeon Defenders 2, which is another game, of course. Um, and this one is dropped by the Ogre during the Old Ones Army event. And uh, yeah, it's actually not the brightest. The uh, Speaking of, I had mentioned that the Wisp is one of the brightest ones. Actually, the suspicious looking tentacle is the other one. Those are the two brightest ones. Um, this is like the mid-tier um, as far as brightness. But I think it looks kind of cool. Um, and I did get all the Old Ones Army ones I got legitimately um, because actually they're pretty easy to get. If you fight the Old Ones Army event, you're likely to get them. Uh, so those are actually all the ones. I've now gone through all the ones that are available on, on PC, and most of those, of course, are available on, uh, well, the large majority, almost all of them are available on all the platforms, actually, and a few of them are uh, the 1.3 updated platforms only, as I mentioned. Now, I'm going to talk about um, the other ones that are available on mobile and 3DS. Let me just, I need to scroll through my notes. One second. Okay, sorry, there are some that are actually exclusive to old gen consoles still, as well as mobile and 3DS. So the ones I'm going to mention now are on the old gen consoles that don't have the updates on mobile until it gets the update and, uh, and on 3DS as well. Uh, so the new gen consoles actually formerly had all of these, and these were all replaced in your inventory with gold bunnies when the uh, PS4 and Xbox One got the update. I expect the same will likely happen when uh, the mobile platforms, iOS and Android, eventually do get that update as well. Um, so I'm just going to talk about these. I can't show them because they're not on here. Uh, the Bat Pet is obtained uh, summoned by the Vial of Blood. The Vial of Blood is an uncommon drop from Vampire Miners, which don't exist on PC, and uh, rarely it's also found in Gold Chest. Now, this is one of the ones that does some damage. Uh, so we're getting into these These pets are ones that can do some damage. They didn't um, allow any of the ones on PC to do damage. 
So uh, the bat pet can do two to four damage. Um, and I'll mention just the ones that can do damage. Uh, the guinea pig is another pet that you can get on these platforms. Does not do damage. It is summoned by the cabbage item, which is dropped by dragon snatchers. Again, don't exist on PC. Um, and also you can find it in regular and gold chests on those platforms. Apparently the guinea pig pet though does not currently work on the mobile versions. Uh, but if you're on an old gen console or I guess on 3DS, it should work. Uh, so that's the cabbage dropped by dragon snatchers. Gets you the guinea pig. Uh, the slime pet uh, only exists on these platforms. It is summoned by the Petri dish item, um, not to be confused with the slime uh, minion, which is a different thing, um, but the slime pet is summoned by the Petri dish, which is dropped by shadow slimes and can also be found in gold chests. There is a Tiffia, which is a type of hornet. Um, it's larger than the, uh, where'd that go? Larger than the baby hornet. Um, it's like a larger version of that, uh, but it is obtained by uh, getting beeswax, which is dropped by dragon hornets, which I think also are only on these platforms. Um, and it can also be found in gold chests as well as ivy chests, which are in the uh, jungle shrines in the underground jungle. The tiffia, unlike the baby hornet, does do damage, uh, one to five damage. Um, there you go. So there's also a werewolf pet which uh, is summoned by the wolf fang, which is dropped by werewolves and is found also in gold chests. The werewolf pet actually does the most damage, uh, 10 damage it will deal. Um, some of these will home in on enemies and some of them will not. Some of them will only do damage if they happen to pass through or run into an enemy. Uh, I'm not sure if the werewolf pet will chase down enemies. I don't believe the tiffia does um, and I'm not sure about the bat. Uh, there is also a zombie pet, uh, which is summoned by the brain item. The brain is dropped by the groom, which is a type of zombie, and it can also be found in gold, shadow, and lizard chests. Uh, lizard chests, of course, in the uh, lizard temple, the jungle temple in the underground jungle. Um, so the zombie pet will deal six to seven damage on the old gen console and 3DS, but on mobile it only deals one damage for whatever reason. Um, so again, those will likely go away on mobile when mobile does get the update. Uh, there are a few more that are available only on mobile and 3DS that are not available on the old gen consoles. Uh, again, mobile will likely lose these ones as well. There's Alpha, which is like a little elf, cute little elf, summoned by the Holiday Bobble. The Holiday Bobble is obtained by cutting down trees during the Christmas season, um, which of course is you know Christmas time event. Um, you can get presents and you can also get holiday baubles on uh, mobile and 3DS from cutting down trees. Uh, and again, another thing that actually there are some events or uh, seasons, special seasons or themes that only exist on mobile and 3DS. So one of those is the Valentine's event, which takes place the entirety of February. Uh, you can also cheat a little by changing the date on your device uh, if you really want these, but uh, the Cupid pet is summoned by the Broken Heart Crystal and during February, the Valentine's seasonal event, uh, you have a one in 12 chance to get the Broken Heart Crystal to summon Cupid when you are mining gems during that event. Um, there's also a worm pet, which is inspired by the actual worms games. It looks like, you know, the worms from the worms games. Uh, it is summoned by the suspicious looking apple. The suspicious looking apple is dropped by devourers, giant worms, and diggers, and it can also be found in chess. Uh, the worm pet is the only one that speaks, actually. It has seven words and phrases that happen. Um, they basically match with mostly uh, certain things happening in the game, like if, you th if you're throwing a grenade, it'll yell out grenade, for instance. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it has seven words and phrases, the only one that actually speaks. There is also an old lady pet, uh, which is also likewise inspired by the Worms games, uh, summoned by the old walking stick, which is purchased from the clothier for one platinum. There's also a pet turkey, uh, which is summoned by the turkey feather. You buy the turkey feather from the merchant for 10 gold only during the Thanksgiving event. Uh, so similarly, again, an event that only exists on these platforms. Uh, Thanksgiving is basically November. It's all of November, I believe. Um, 
You can purchase the turkey feather from the merchant for 10 gold and summon your pet turkey. The pet turkey is the only pet that is required to summon a boss. That boss is Turker the Ungrateful. Uh, and again, the boss itself is also likely to be removed when mobile gets the update. So um, having said all of those, there are just three, just three pets that are only on mobile platforms that are not on 3DS or any other platform. Uh, and these three are likely to disappear when mobile uh, does get uh, the update. Um, of course, you will be getting some new ones, uh, but you'll be probably losing these ones. And if they do the same thing, you'll probably get, uh, I think it was a gold bunny <laughs> as a replacement for these in your inventory. But anyway, um, the Android pet. Uh, Android pet is only uh, normally available to get on uh, the Android Google Play version of the game. It is summoned by the shiny black slab item. The shiny black slab you will only find in chests on uh, the Android Google Play version, but you can actually get it on other mobile platforms by trading with other people uh, who are on you know, another, another platform. So, well, by trading with somebody who got it on Android or who traded it from someone else. Anyway, um, you can only find it on Android, but, uh, but it is possible to get it by trading and uh, therefore have it if you're on iOS or uh, Amazon uh, or Windows Mobile actually as well. Um, so similar idea, um, there's also a golden turtle, which is only normally obtainable on the Amazon Fire TV. So that ends up being pretty rare because probably not that many people are playing on that. Um, but it can be found in chests on the Amazon Fire TV. The item is the golden seaweed, which summons the golden turtle as opposed to the regular seaweed that summons the regular pet turtle. Um, so again, you can only normally find that on the Amazon Fire TV in chests, but you can trade with other people on other mobile platforms uh, to get it if you're on a different one. Uh, and also one last one, uh, the Leprechaun o Fife, uh, which is uh, summoned by the pot of gold, pot of gold uh, item. The pot of gold is the only other one that's crafted actually, uh, crafted from five rainbow pieces during the St. Patrick's seasonal event, which again only exists, um, I think only on mobile, but uh, you people on old gen consoles can correct me on that uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, so yeah, mobile and 3DS, I think, uh, actually no, St. Patrick's is not implemented on 3DS, which is why you cannot get this on 3DS. Um, but basically during the St. Patrick's seasonal event on mobile, there will be rainbow pieces that fall from the sky during the daytime, much like fallen stars do at night. Um, the St. Patrick's seasonal event is March 5th to 31st, so it's almost the whole month, month of March, except for the first four days. And rainbow pieces will fall from the sky. You can collect five of those and craft a pot of gold, and then you can get a little leprechaun. Um, the thing about the leprechaun is that the leprechaun actually drops coins sometimes when it jumps. So if you can like trick it into jumping, um, it has a chance of dropping coins when it jumps. So uh, so you can kind of shake shake coins out of your leprechaun and, and farm some money that way. Uh, anyway, that's the last one. And uh, as I say, those, uh, those ones that are on mobile uh, exclusively right now, um, and the ones that are old gen and mobile and 3DS, uh, all those ones that I did not show you because they're not on PC, uh, well, yeah, you're probably gonna lose them when mobile gets the update. So if you're watching this after that, uh, that's why. <laughs> but if you're watching this now, enjoy them while you can. So anyway, that is all the pets and all the light pets in Terraria. So I hope you liked the video. Obviously a bit of a long one, uh, but thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time with something new. Bye for now.